objectives of this design project were to familiarize ourselves with the fundamental principles of subsonic aerodynamics that underlie the operation of an aircraft propeller, that is, how blade geometry can be altered to maximize the propeller's performance, namely in terms of thrust and efficiency for some given operating conditions. The second part of the design project was to apply those principles to the design of a small-scale fixed-pitch propeller for some given efficiency target in operating conditions and to be tested in a one-to-one -one scale wind tunnel. The final design had to meet the following performance targets, a static thrust of 0 0.2 newtons at a 5,000 5, RPM propeller speed, and a maximum efficiency at a free stream velocity of 5 meters per second, and a 9,000 RPM propeller speed. Furthermore, the weight of the propeller had to be minimized. The final design had to comply with the following constraints. A maximum diameter of 130 millimeters. The propeller had to have two and only two blades, designed using only NACA 40 GT series airfoil. The propeller had to be mounted on a designated RC motor and rotate clockwise as seen from the front of the propeller. Before designing the actual airfoil and propeller, we will go over some of the propeller theory that we saw in class. In particular, we will use the blade element theory. The main takeaway from this theory is the parameter gamma. Gamma is defined as a small elemental drag over a small elemental lift. The important note is that a small gamma corresponds to a large lift and small drag, therefore a high lift to drag ratio. Now it is shown in class that the efficiency is defined uh, by the pitch angle and aerodynamic performance from the formula you see right here having a high lift to drag ratio increases the efficiency it can also be seen from this graph over here so for a given beta Efficiency is increased by minis minimizing gamma, which is maximizing lift to drag ratio. Now you can see that as gamma increases, the efficiency drops. Therefore, when doing our analysis, look for the points of highest lift to drag ratio. We found this software online. It was called a J Blade, which basically what it does is like an interface that operates on X foil and designs uh, a simulation for like a propeller based on it. So if you go into XFOIL and I go to, to the first step of XFOIL is basically inputting your NACA profiles. As you can see here, you just right click FOIL, NACA FOILs. You can input your four or five digit uh, NACA <coughs> profiles and also specify your number of points. <laughs> So you can even like, after you set it up, you can refine it, increase your number of panels. I found it like around 250 is pretty good to actually make it converge. After that's done, you go into your analysis. So as you can see here, it basically gives all you all your plots for like whatever you need, your CL, your CD, CM, your efficiency or alpha. You can select what parameters you need from this chart. And once this is done, we basically move on to your propeller design. So the next step is plotting the polars for all your profiles. So you select one profile and you plot your polar. You can fine tune your polar using these parameters here, your A pluses and A minus, so it looks closer to what uh, you need. And then you move on to the actual 3D design of your propeller. So these are like a bunch of trials we tried. We started from like a simple 2D extrude of like a single NACA profile. But once you move into like your analysis page, there are like a bunch of analysis done. These are basically showing you all of the trials that we have. So you can see like the propeller efficiency curves and your thrust versus your velocity curves. And there's also a, basically your CL over CD, which is like your efficiency over like your span for different uh, trials that we tried and all these trials were run like twice basically one at rotation speed of 5000 rpm to get your uh, static thrust and then at 9000 rpm to measure your efficiency curves 
And once all this was done and we were pretty happy with what we had, it was like finding a good trade-off between achieving that thrust and making sure that propeller efficiency basically peaks at five meters per second at 9,000 RPM. We found out it was like a trial 23. Uh, and as you may, might notice, it has like 6% camber in all the airfoils because we found out it's always better to have high cambered airfoils to increase your efficiency at the same peak instead of shifting the peak. That was our uh, final design we analyzed from JBlade. The mechanical design of the propeller was realized using NXCAD due to its integrated structural analysis software and advanced surfacing tools. The blades were modeled using five airfoil sections distributed evenly across the span of the blade. The actual blade surface was then created using the airfoil sections as well as the leading and trailing edges of the blade as guide curves. The propeller hub diameter was increased slightly to better accommodate the input shaft. An integrated keyway and an actual M2 bolt were added to fasten the propeller securely to the input shaft, mitigating the effect of vibrations during operation. A detailed drawing of the propeller can be found in the appendix section of the project report. The next step in the mechanical design process was to create a representative load case to verify the structural integrity of our design. The NX Nastran package was used thanks to its integrated simplified meshing and robust structural solver. The propeller ge geometry was meshed using a 3D 10-node tetrahedral mesher. The element size was decreased in order to better capture the, lax the large expected stress gradients near the blade root. The inner hub surface was constrained in translation, while rotational and thrust load was applied to the propeller blades based on the simulated performance at high RPM. Solving for the element nodal stress and nodal displacement magnitude, we clearly see an important stress concentration near the blade root. The propeller geometry was therefore slightly altered to mitigate those large stress concentrations, which yielded a safety factor of 1.19 and a maximum blade tip deflection of 0 0.16 inches, which is more than acceptable given the load case chosen far beyond the operating range of the propeller. After the design had been settled upon and FEA was performed, we were ready to 3D print. This is the output result of the 3D printer. It's worth noting that after the supports were removed, the trailing edge was left with many divots and cracks. This could likely have caused a loss in performance. The prop was then moved to the test setup. Here you can see the prop mounted on the motor. A piece of white tape was placed on one blade for no apparent reason. The prop was then run at 5000 RPM with no wind speed in order to calculate the static thrust. Then the wind was turned on to 5 meters per second. Without spinning the propeller, an offset was noted down. The propeller RPM was then varied from 4000 to 12000 RPM and transient data was recorded. This is what the data acquisition process looked like. On the bottom, you can see the transient data. When the RPM settled to a value we were looking for, a snapshot would then be taken. The information will be copied from here over to the Excel sheet, which we would then use to post-process the data later on. In conclusion, we used JBlade to design our propeller. JBlade allowed us to vary many parameters such as angle of attack, pitch, camber, and twist, and explore its effects on the aerodynamic performance and efficiency. Experimental results showed a static thrust of 0 0.0903 newtons. Dynamic testing showed a max efficiency of 36% at 10,000 RPM and 35.66% at 9,000 RPM. Thank you for watching our subsonic aerodynamics propeller video. We hope you've enjoyed the Spitfire clips. I mean, we hope you've enjoyed teaching the class as much as we've enjoyed taking it. Thank you.